Hey guys, it's Amy here and today I bring you mini reviews of all the books that I read in May without any spoilers. So in May I read four books and one graphic novel, so let's get into it. The first book I read whilst I was on holiday and that was How To Be Bad by Laura Miracle, E. Lockhart and Sarah Milanowski. For me this was a perfect holiday read, really nice, fluffy, funny, just enjoyable all the way through. So How To Be Bad follows the story of three young girls who go on a road trip to try and figure out what's going on with their life. Their aim on the road trip is to meet up with one of the girl's boyfriends who she's having issues with, but on the way lots of crazy things happen and they meet other people and things like that it's just really nice and if you love a good road trip book I think this would be perfect for you. What I loved about this book was that the three different authors wrote the three different girls in the book so there were differences between the chapters so you did feel like you were connecting with each of those girls differently and it was just really nice to see how their stories developed and how they grew as people throughout the novel and where they got to at the end really. So I gave this one four out of five stars and it comes out on the 4th of June. The next book that I read on holiday was an Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir and I absolutely adored this book. You've probably already heard a lot about it because I've seen it everywhere on Booktube at the moment, but this is pretty much everything I love in a book. It was just absolutely brilliant. Fantastic world building, the characters were phenomenal and I cannot wait to read the second part as now it has been announced there will be another one because I think to begin with people just thought it was going to be a standalone but I'm glad it's not because I cannot wait to get more of these characters. So this follows the story of a young boy and a young girl, I think they're both in their late teens. We follow their stories separately throughout the book and flick between their lives. We see the young girl who is a part of a group of people known as the Scholars who have been overruled and conquered by the people known as the Marshals. The young boy is part of the Marshals and the Marshals have overridden this land and pretty much oppressed everyone inside it, created slavery and all these horrible things. Now within the Marshals they have this elite group of young people that are pretty much assassins, pretty much brought up from a very young age to kill and hunt and torture and do all these horrific things under the rule of the Emperor and the Commandant. So the young guy that we follow in this book is actually part of this elite fighting force, the Mask. Within the first few chapters of his story we learn that actually he's not very happy being a mask and doing what the masks have been brought up to do. We follow his story as he tries to change the course of his life so that he isn't involved with these oppressive, nasty, torturous people. It's definitely not as easy as it sounds and lots of exciting things happen involving that. So you can probably guess that at some point in this book the two characters meet and it's all very very interesting how everything kind of melds together and their stories cross over. It is a brilliant book and I would highly recommend to everyone. If you're avoiding it because of the hype I would say throw caution to the wind and just give it a go because I absolutely got hooked within the first few chapters and that very rarely happens with me. I absolutely loved it and I gave it five out of five stars and I've added it into my favourites for the year. It is a brilliant book. Next book I read on the plane flight home from my holiday and it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer The Long Way Home. This is the first book in the season eight comic books of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So if you saw my previous video you will know that I love Buffy the Vampire Slayer a lot. So when I saw on Amazon that they had a season 8 of Buffy in comic book form, I was jumping at the chance to buy them. I'm gonna be honest with you, I was a little bit disappointed with this one. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't quite what this was. So if you've seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer and you've seen all the way to the end, season 7, you will know that at the end Sunnydale, where they live, is destroyed, so they have to move away. And this is what happens in this one. Basically it just follows Buffy and her friends doing more of what they did in the TV show but in a comic book form. It took me a little while to get into and I was just a little bit confused with the storyline. I don't know whether I've just missed out on some stuff because I know there are a lot more comic books that I haven't read so I don't know whether there are ones before this that I should have read to make this one make sense. I don't know if any of you have read these and can explain to me why is Dawn a giant? I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't understand where that's come from. I don't know whether it's something I should have just got from the beginning of this book or whether it was something that happened before this and I should have read it. I don't know. It took me a little while to get into but I think I will carry on. I have bought the second one so I'm gonna give it a go, see if I get more into it, see if because I've already read this one I will understand a bit more of the story once I read the second one. I don't know. I gave it three out of five stars and I will carry on. I'm hoping hoping I get more into it and that I really enjoy it because I just really want to have that nostalgic 
Buffy feeling again and just go into a whole new story with her and yeah I don't know I don't know tell me have you read this one did you enjoy it do they get better what did you think I'd love to have a discussion with anyone who's read these Buffy comics down below so the next book I read is also a review copy from Hotkey Books and it was Lorelei by Laura Dockrill this one comes out in July so there's a little bit of a wait for this one just pop a little picture of what the cover will look like so Lorelei follows the story of two young people Rory and Lorelei Lorelei is a young mermaid princess who miraculously turns into a human and ends up on a beach and is found by Rory and when Rory finds her she is completely naked doesn't really know what's going on can't really walk properly and is obviously very cold because she's on a beach naked in a storm Rory being a teenage boy is very confused excited worried panicky about the whole finding a naked girl on a beach thing and he decides to take her in and try and look after her work out where she's come from for a long while in this book Rory and his friends do not realize that Lorelai came from the ocean and that she was once a mermaid this book is told through three different perspectives Lorelai's Rory's and the sea the sea I really enjoyed the narrative of in the Lorelai and Rory parts it's really nice to see their specific views on things but with the sea there was just this encompassing nice feel about it you could see all the different parts of the story and it was just really good so now that Lorelai is on land this causes a whole heap of chaos the mermaid kingdom type thing that she has come from goes into chaos because they don't know where she's gone they think she's been stolen they think people are poaching her and things like that so they are really worried they send one of their mermaids up the Thames into London to speak to the Prime Minister and to the rest of the world to try and find Lorelai which I found really hilarious the characters in this book were really really brilliant they also had this group of pirates that lived on a big boat that looked like a massive Tudor house these aren't your average kind of pirates they're all very well dressed they have their own tailor on the boat they have slick back hair perfumed nails done all absolutely spicks back so that they can look the best they can when they go on shore and meet people. So basically everyone's on a hunt for Lorelei and from that chaos and excitement and adventure ensues. I gave this book four out of five stars and I would recommend to anyone who enjoys a funny adventure mermaid type read i'd never read a book with mermaids in before so it was just really enjoyable so on to the final book that i read this month and probably one that i enjoyed the most in different ways to the other ones and it is a reread for me it is to kill a mockingbird by harper lee i was sent this one by penguin random house because they've been doing a read along with this one this week so if you've been reading that i would love to speak to you in the comments about your thoughts on the book i first read this book when i was 14 years old so that was about seven or eight years ago whilst i was in school at the time i did really enjoy it i don't think it really resonated as much as it did this time i think the characters and the story and the poeticness just really hit me this time and this book has gone into my all-time favorites now that I've reread it and I know I will reread it again and again in the future it was phenomenal beautiful lovely I just want everyone to read it the reason this read-along happened is because on the 14th of July this year a sequel to this novel is going to be published it is called go set a watchman and it will follow the same characters as in to kill a mockingbird but I think it's set a while after the events in to kill a mockingbird so now that I have reread to kill a mockingbird I am incredibly excited about reading go set a watchman I think it is going to be brilliant but I'd show you my old battered copy of my book literally the back is just about to fall off when this book was first published it cost 35 pence to buy it in the united kingdom isn't that amazing just imagine how many books you could buy nowadays if they were all 35 pence <laughs> So if you don't know the story of To Kill a Mockingbird, it follows a family known as the Finches in the 1930s in deep South America. During that time in the 1900s, racism it was extremely prevalent in society and this book has very strong themes of racism and what it means to be a human and living in a world where things like that still happen. It is told through the eyes of the young girl in the Finch family known as Scout. It follows her, her brother and her father and their family and friends over the course of a few summers and during a time when her father who is a lawyer is supporting the case of a black man who has been accused of raping a young girl the young girl and her family are white and obviously during that time the word of a white person against the word of a black person is just taken as truth so we see how scout and her family and her dad fight this case and what happens after that and the tragedy and heartbreak and just everything in this book is perfect. You have to read it if you haven't. Just go and pick it up. 
now. So I gave this book five out of five stars and it's gone into my favourites and it will be in my favourites for all time, I think. So those are all the books that I read in May. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'd love to talk to you about any of these books if you've read them also. As always, I will leave links to everything I've mentioned today, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything down below. If you wish to be my friend on Goodreads, that would be awesome. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye! So question number three is your Buffy vs OTP and that most definitely has to be Spike and Buffy, maybe with a sprinkling of Tara and Willow because I do really 